When he discovers that his life is coming to an end, a lizard who has spent several decades trapped inside an aquarium decides to create an escape plan to gain his longed for freedom. Today we're going to recap the story of the movie, Leo, from 2023. Leo and Squirtle are the pets of the fifth graders and, for decades, they have lived trapped inside an aquarium watching a bunch of chatty teenagers trying to graduate from their last year of elementary school. On the very first day of school, Ms. Salinas reveals that at the end of the year there will be a competition and the winning class will win an excursion to a special place. In the last two months, the three fifth grade classes will take part in an arts, rhetoric, science and history competition and the class that does best in these activities will be awarded a trip to Magic Land Park. While observing the behavior of these people, Leo and Squirtle come to the conclusion that the teacher is pregnant, since she won't stop eating the students' snacks and then vomits in the classroom trash can. That evening, a parents' meeting takes place at the school and the suspicion of the pets is confirmed. The principal announces that Mrs. Salinas will be going on maternity leave, as she is due to give birth to a baby in a few months' time. When the students receive this news, they talk to each other about the many pranks they intend to play on the substitute teacher. Looking at the pets of the fifth graders, some parents wonder how long they've been trapped inside and Leo discovers that lizards of his species live for an average of 75 years. At that moment, he remembers that he's been living in that aquarium for decades and searches his memory to see when he got there. In doing so, the animal remembers that it arrived there as a hatchling in October 1949. In an attempt to find out how old he is, Leo decides to go and talk to the second-year pet, but the pair can only see him during the fire drills. So Leo uses his gigantic tongue to set off the alarm and the teacher asks Anthony to take the animals outside while his classmates evacuate the classroom. When they finally meet the other pets, Leo talks to Cinnabon, the second year's pet rabbit, to find out how old he is. Since it's in second grade that children learn addition and subtraction, there's no one better than Cinnabon to help him do the math, and he reveals that the lizard is 74 years old. When he returns to the room, Leo is very sad because he knows that his days are numbered. The animal believes he will perish next year, when he turns 75, but Squirtle tries to comfort his friend and says that animals that live in captivity have a longer life expectancy than those that are free in the wild. However, these words don't make Leo feel any better and he regrets having wasted his life in that aquarium. The lizard claims that it never had the chance to choose its own food and only ate what humans made available to it. What's more, he never had the chance to meet the love of his life and mate to leave offspring. Suddenly, while Leo is thinking about everything he hasn't experienced, Mrs. Malkin enters the classroom with an intimidating appearance and introduces herself as a substitute teacher. On her very first day at school, the elderly woman set out to change the entire teaching methodology used by Ms. Salinas and said that, from now on, every Friday a student would have to take one of the pets home. When he hears this, Squirtle despairs, as he has already suffered a lot during the time when the students were forced to take them home. On the other hand, Leo is excited about the novelty, as he will have the chance to escape when the children are distracted. The animal believes that by doing this, he will have the chance to live for real before he turns 75. That day, Summer volunteers to take Leo to her house and, when he arrives at the girl's room, the reptile spots an open window. He believes that this is his chance to escape, so he prepares to break out of his prison and climb over the wall to get there. Meanwhile, Summer and her family are in the dining room and, after taking a shower, the girl returns to her room. Due to his advanced age, Leo moves slowly and has not yet managed to reach the window. When the girl realizes that he has managed to escape, she starts looking all over the room for him and accidentally throws the lizard on top of her drawer when she opens the curtain. At that moment, Leo lets out a cry of pain and Summer discovers that he can speak. Terrified, she starts to call her mother, but the animal begs her to keep this secret, otherwise the humans will try to study it. As she doesn't want the animal to suffer, Summer promises to keep his secret and, on Monday, takes him back to school. During class, Professor Malkin forbids the children to use their laptops as a study tool and opens a box full of books. After distributing the encyclopedias to the students, the woman orders them to take the books home and study through them. When the classroom is empty, Squirtle asks his friend why he hasn't left and Leo reveals that he enjoyed spending the weekend with Summer. The reptile then claims that the next time a child decides to take it home, it will escape. However, to Leo's surprise, when Friday arrives, Summer offers to take him home again, but it's Eli who gets the job of staying with the lizard over the weekend. Seeing her reptile friend being taken away, Summer asks if she can go and visit him, but Eli's nanny drone forbids her to go near the boy. On a Saturday, the boy has a friend over and they play at assembling Lego pieces. However, Eli's parents make him wear protective clothing so that he doesn't get contaminated by the lizard's germs. The boy is also forbidden to eat snacks like any normal child, 
and instead his afternoon snack is cabbage dumplings prepared by his mother. When Zayn leaves and the room is empty, Leo tries to escape and almost gets sucked into the vacuum cleaner, which is on 24 hours a day. The animal then uses its tongue to wiggle and falls on the table, destroying the entire Lego city that the boys have put together. When he finally approaches the window, Leo is captured by the robot vacuum cleaner and his tail gets stuck in it. At that moment, the lizard is dragged all over the house and only manages to get rid of the machine when the family dog shows up to help him. Despite coming out of the attack alive, Leo loses half of his tail, but is reassured because he knows it will grow back. While he's talking to the dog, Eli shows up and is shocked to discover that the pet in his living room can talk. Once again, the lizard asks the boy not to tell anyone his secret and decides to help him get rid of that drone, as it is preventing Eli from making new friends. So, encouraged by the reptile, the boy writes a goodbye letter to the machine and, the next morning, they go out into the garden to play together. On Monday, when he meets his friend again, Eli reveals that he hasn't managed to escape once more and Squirtle is worried when he realizes that the lizard has lost part of his tail. During the week, Dr. Wenger, Jada's father, goes to talk to the school principal to try to convince him to find another replacement for teacher Salinas, because his daughter won't stop complaining about Mrs. Malkin. However, his mission is a failure and the old woman remains the fifth grade teacher. Then, the following weekend, Jada decides to take the lizard home with her, as she realizes that her two classmates really enjoyed its company. That Saturday, the girl's birthday party will take place and she is very sad because nothing is going according to plan. So Leo decides to console her and once again convinces the girl that she is the only one who can hear him, just as he did with the other two teenagers. In this way, the animal manages to prevent her from telling her parents that the pet at her school can talk and, at the same time, helps the young girl deal with her existential crisis. Jada grew up believing that she had to be perfect and that everyone had to like her, so she put too much pressure on herself to ensure that nothing got out of hand. So the lizard helps her understand that she's just a normal teenager, like any other, and doesn't need to look perfect to win other people's approval, because that makes her unhappy. After hearing this, the girl decides to relax and just enjoy her party. During the celebration, Leo rests in his glass cage while he watches the animals trapped inside an enclosure struggling to get hold of the leftover food that the children throw to them from time to time. Those animals were brought along to serve as an attraction and entertain the party guests, but the truth is that they're not happy at all. Upon realizing this, Jada and her colleagues decide to work as a team to free them and open the automatic doors that keep them trapped inside the enclosure. At that moment, the animals start running around and devouring the food that has been prepared for the guests. While people flee in desperation, Leo takes the opportunity to escape and is proud to see all those animals running freely out of the mansion. However, when he hears the youngsters calling his name, the lizard gives up his escape and returns to Jada's arms, who is very happy to see him. Over the next few weeks, all the children in the class get the chance to take Leo home and they begin to take an enormous liking to him. Seeing his fellow captive getting presents from the students, Squirtle realizes that the lizard has been communicating with them and that's why he always returns to school instead of running away. Leo then says that he ended up getting attached to those youngsters and, since they started taking him home, the lizard has been secretly helping the children deal with their fears and insecurities. However, the following weekend, Leo will have to go to Anthony's house, who is known for being the bully in the room. Concerned for his friend, the tortoise decides to accompany him this time and finds a way to get into the transport box without the boy noticing him. That night, while Anthony is watching a UFC fight and eating his macaroni and cheese, Squirtle decides to introduce himself and the boy is terrified to discover that the animal can talk. The truth is that the tortoise was jealous of all the affection and attention the children gave Leo and decided to try to do the same as his friend. The animal then asks why Anthony is acting like such a bully and tries to help him deal with his insecurity, because he knows that this is what makes him so aggressive. Unlike his classmates, Anthony doesn't feel smart enough, so Squirtle tries to console him, but ends up traumatizing him. So, during the night, while the tortoise is sleeping, Leo goes to talk to the boy and the two become great friends. The following week, as all the students have already taken the lizard home, Mrs. Malkin reveals that the children will now have to stay with Squirtle for the next few weekends. However, none of the students wants to keep the tortoise and they all argue to decide who will take Leo on Friday. When she realizes how fond the children have become of the reptile, the teacher decides to use it to motivate her students to win the academic championship that will take place at the end of the year. She says that if they don't win the competition, they'll never be able to take Leo home again. This served as an incentive for the young people to work harder and harder to learn the content taught in class, and they all began to study twice as hard to win the championship. As time goes by, Leo and the students become increasingly close and the lizard even gets cell phones as gifts to talk to them at night. 
However, as none of the youngsters know that the animal is talking to his other classmates, Leo needs to divide his attention between them without arousing suspicion. Furious at his friend's increasing popularity, Squirtle decides to record a video of him chatting with one of the students and sends it to the whole class. In this way, the children discover that the lizard has lied to them and go after him in search of an explanation. When he realizes that he has been found out, Leo apologizes and says that he only did it because he wanted to be able to help each student individually. Just then, Professor Malkin arrives in the classroom and sees the animal communicating with the children. Frightened, she sneaks out of the classroom and waits until all her pupils have gone to get the lizard. When she gets home, the teacher scolds Leo for talking to the students behind her back and gradually reveals her greatest pain. Despite having dedicated her entire life to the classroom, Malkin has never had her own class and her career has always been reduced to being a substitute teacher. Because of this, she appears to be such a grumpy, unhappy lady. During the conversation, the animal discovers that Malkin also studied at that school and used to be very cheerful during her teenage years. So Leo helps the teacher regain her joy and self-confidence and tells her that she will make her students come first in the competition that will take place the next morning. When the big day finally arrives, Mrs. Malkin takes Leo into her coat pocket to watch the competition and is proud to discover that her students are the winners. So, the following week, she accompanies them on a trip to Magic Land Park and ends up being voted Teacher of the Year. When she receives the trophy, the woman is very moved and feels proud of herself when the principal and the student's parents come to congratulate her on her work. After leaving school, Malkin takes the lizard to Everglades National Park and throws it out of the car. Confused, Leo asks what's going on and the woman says that now he'll be able to fulfill his dream of living free in nature. On Monday, when the kids arrive in class, they ask where Leo is and the teacher tells them that he has probably run away. Just then, Malkin picks up a note from inside the aquarium and says that it's a goodbye letter left by the lizard. However, the truth is that it's just a shopping list that she made herself and reads as if it were a note written by Leo. When they discover that their friend has left, the children are saddened but try to come to terms with the fact that he is now living the life he always wanted. The following week, as scheduled, Mrs. Malkin accompanies the children on the trip and Squirtle decides to go out to look for his friend, as he knows it was that old woman who managed to get rid of him. So the tortoise takes Eli's cell phone and uses it to call the drone. Then, with the help of the machine, he flies over the city in search of the school bus. Meanwhile, Leo tries to get along with the other animals in the park, but since he has lived all his life in captivity, he behaves in a totally unusual way and ends up alienating the creatures that live there. When he finally finds the fifth graders, Squirtle says that it was Mrs. Malkin who took Leo away and only she knows where he is. At that moment, the children press their teacher to reveal the location of the lizard and the woman has no choice but to tell the truth. When they discover that Leo is in Everglades Park, the class asks their teacher to help them find him and Malkin orders coach Kimura to change the route. However, the man refuses to follow her orders, so she tries to take the wheel and ends up falling out of the bus. Luckily, the children manage to pull their teacher back into the vehicle and Malkin decides to follow another strategy to get her students to the park. A few hours pass and Leo continues to try to socialize with the other lizards of his species, but soon discovers that he is unable to survive in the wild on his own. Since being brought there, the animal has been unable to feed itself, as the fireflies are much smarter than it. Luckily, Leo is found by the animals he helped free on Jada's birthday and they help him survive in that hostile environment. While Malkin waits for the right moment to put his plan into action, Squirtle decides to hitch a ride on Eli's drone to go after his friend. When they arrive at Magic Land Park, the children follow Coach Kimura to a stall and, while the man buys some snacks, the gang runs back to the bus. Mrs. Malkin tries to keep up with her students, but ends up falling behind and the coach manages to catch up with her. Kimura tries to stop the teacher from getting on the bus and is attacked by the drone, which, after leaving Squirtle in the park, has returned to help Eli and his classmates. When everyone gets into the vehicle, one of the students takes the wheel and drives quickly to Everglades Park. At that moment, Leo is lamenting the fact that his funeral is approaching and he won't have the chance to make peace with the children. However, upon hearing this, the lizards nearby ask Leo how old he is and say that their species lives to be 110, so he has more than 30 years ahead of him. When he discovers the truth, the reptile is overjoyed and relieved to know that he will have the chance to meet his friends again. While he's celebrating with his new friends, Squirtle appears and the animals realize they're near a lake full of crocodiles. Immediately, they all run away and Leo ends up being left behind. Just as the lizard is about to be devoured, the school bus approaches, looking frightening due to the branches that have become stuck in the vehicle. Frightened, the crocodiles hide, 
but when they see the humans approaching, one of them decides to attack and Mrs. Malkin confronts it to defend the children. When she realizes that her shurikens are unable to stop the beast, she decides to throw some tablets into its mouth and manages to defeat it. Then the drone flings the creature away and everyone goes out to look for Leo. At that moment, the students see the grayish body of the lizard on the ground and, even though they believe the animal has perished, they thank him. Thanks to Leo, these young people were able to deal with their traumas and insecurities, which helped them win the student championship. During their farewell, Anthony picks up the lizard's body so that he can hug it one last time and discovers that he is facing a skin swap. Just then, the real Leo falls out of a tree and the whole class is relieved to know that he is alive. Jada then reveals that she and her colleagues went there to see their old friend before he turned 75. At this point, the lizard reveals that he still has many years of life ahead of him, and everyone celebrates the beautiful news. Suddenly, Squirtle appears and asks for forgiveness for having snitched on his friend. After making up, all the fifth graders and their pets go to enjoy the day at Magic Land Park. At the end of the school year, Professor Salinas comes to visit her old class and brings her baby so that the students can meet him. During graduation, after receiving their diplomas, the teenagers say goodbye to Leo and Squirtle, as they will be attending high school at another school. That day, Professor Malkin learns that she will have the chance to teach her own class next year and convinces the principal to allow Leo and Squirtle to accompany her. Now, these pets will have a new challenge ahead of them, in which they will need to learn how to deal with elementary school children. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.